and welcome to Louis Philippe in Pursuit of Excellence. The words great, icon, legend, they really don't do justice to my guest today. He is the one and only man of Indian cinema, Amitabh Bachchan. Great to see you, Amit. Long very gracious time. words, uh, Vijay. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Great pleasure, but uh, really not uh, accustomed to hearing these lovely words that you accolades that you throw at me, but thank you so much. No, it's wonderful to see you. The last time we met up, it was in England at Wimbledon. Absolutely. And um, um, we enjoyed uh, having you there. And did you enjoy the tennis? Absolutely. I was actually having problems getting into Wimbledon. And I really must thank you for, you know, escorting me in and uh, taking me to the players enclosure and the restrooms and places that I'd never seen before. So I really must thank you for that. So we, we're But going you know, to, surprisingly, yeah. I haven't been to Wimbledon after that. It's time to make another visit. Yes, sir, it's time for you to invite me. <laughs> <laughs> always open, always open. We're going to go back and talk a little bit about your early years. So you need to wear a memory hat on a little bit. And uh, let's go back in time. Now, when you grew up, of course, you grew up in a uh, sort of an arts family. Your father was uh, in theater and your mother was also very creative and so on. Uh, did that kind of energize you to become an actor? Never, never thought about uh, joining this profession. Uh, my father was not actually connected with theatre. He was a poet and writer. Uh, my mother was interested, but on a very amateur level. And um, there was never any desire or, or kind of a direction given to me that this is where you need to go, or this is what I need to be doing. We all, when we are in school, you know, we always end up doing something in school plays and and, and that kind of an atmosphere persisted uh, with all of us. Then I, when I was, uh, you know, when I graduated and I was working in, um, uh, as an executive in, in uh, Kolkata, uh, in a managing agency house, I came across, my brother actually, who was also there, came across an advertisement by, by uh, Filmfare Madhuri, which is a famous uh, yes. uh, film magazines, who were holding a contest where they were inviting applicants to come give a test in a, in a sense, if they wanted to join the profession. And I felt that this seemed to be a very uh, honest and direct uh, and a proper manner in which um, somebody desirous of wanting to join the film industry could do so. So I applied and I got rejected in the preliminaries. So that was very disheartening. <laughs> and, uh, but then, you know, by then, somehow something, you know, inside me said that, you know, I, I wanted to get in there. And so I resigned my job, came back home to Delhi, and uh, just uh, one fine day landed up in Mumbai, uh, went from door to door. And, uh, no, but when you look back at that and you think, um, <coughs> is this something I really wanted to do? Did your parents encourage you to do it? Did you want to maybe stay in the professional life other than, uh, other than movies? No, never. Um, I think those early years, um, and we're talking about 40s and 50s, uh, um, the most important element that used to be told to us is you, you have to graduate. Yes. And that used to be the kind of landmark. Yes. There weren't so many facilities available to, uh, to us as they are to the youngsters of today. And they have so many professions and so many tributaries and directions that they can take on at a very early age and actually pursue it and, and you know, make a life out of it. But for us, there weren't so many opportunities at that time. And, and the main thing was, you know, you must graduate. So, our main interest at that time was we have to graduate. But after graduation, what? We didn't have any direction. So you come to Delhi, you come to, brings you to Mumbai. You actually were uh, rejected on several occasions. <laughs> you, is it, is it, was it your physique, being tall, dark, and handsome? Or uh, was it uh, the fact that... Uh, tall and dark. <laughs> Could have the third one. Uh, and, and that was quoted many times. You're too tall. No, no leading lady will ever work with you. So why don't you go back and do some poetry like your father is? <laughs> so uh, these are some of the things. But I think that, you know, that's, it's quite natural for any newcomer that comes in. Uh, we never know um, uh, your potential. Now, of course, the, the younger generation is, is greatly more prepared. And um, there are many um, facilities available to them where they can demonstrate what they're capable of doing. They make videos of themselves. They come from, you know, uh, acting schools and the Pune Film Institute or from private institutes. And uh, they have some kind of a reference which uh, facilitates their 
you know, being picked up. But for us, there was nothing. Well, brings me to the next question of saying, um, you didn't go to any acting classes. No, you did didn't not. have any acting education. No. Did you feel that uh, you had it in you to uh, be an actor, a, a star in films? Well, <clears throat> star we never think of, and I still don't. But yes, uh, I kind of liked that experience. Uh, and right till the time when I was working in Calcutta, I was always, uh, you know, with some amateur group uh, working on theater and, and enjoying that, uh, that moment. So, you come to Mumbai, what was your big break? How did you feel that you were going to be recognized, you were going to make it big, you were um, not a teenager, you came at a later age? Yeah. So, all of these things, uh, positive, negative? I don't think that um, I came in with thinking that I'm going to make it big. I think um, that's a more subjective terminology. Uh, you just want to be associated with cinema. You want to get an opportunity to act. And uh, I was uh, quite fortunate. Um, I came a year before the, the year I actually am supposed to have joined the film industry um, through some kind friends who wanted to do a screen test of mine. And I came and I gave a screen test, but nothing came of it. Um, then my brother, who had then been posted to Mumbai, uh, came across some friends who were going to be working with Khwaja Ahmed Abbas, who was making a film, and he was looking for new faces. He put up my photograph and said, you know, my brother is also a, a keen aspirant. And uh, I don't know, uh, Khwaja Ahmed Abbas seemed to like what he saw. He called me over. So uh, I came here on the 15th of February, um, uh, 1969. And... Uh, he said, fine, you're on. And that, I got my first job. But thereafter, you know, there was always um, a huge struggle to get your next, uh, next film and next opportunity. I remember Meryl Streep saying, you're only as good as your next job, or the yeah. previous job gives you your next job. And uh, someone like Meryl Streep, who's won a box full of Oscars, yeah. still con is concerned about her next job. Yeah, I, I, would, I would agree with her. And I'm so happy that she said that because... Uh, I think similarly, uh, and I'm sure that many of us uh, in the profession uh, think similarly too. It's, um, you're always worried about what's going to happen tomorrow. Okay, this one's over and, and thank God it's, you know, whatever has happened to it, but what about tomorrow and are we going to get another job? And, um, so I think it's, it's, you just keep living day to day and hoping that uh, your previous work or somebody kind enough is going to give you a job and give you an opportunity to, you know, um, show your metal or whatever it is that uh, you've been uh, contracted for. But yes, that, that, is, that is a concern with us every day. It's with me even now. Interesting, isn't it? Uh, the, the interesting thing is that uh, when you started uh, doing movies and um, you felt you were being challenged by the roles that you were starting to get, and uh, how did you challenge yourself further to become a better actor that you can actually delve into the role more deeply? Yeah. I think that's uh, an ongoing process. I'm still working on it. And I still feel that, uh, um, that when I go on the sets tomorrow, I wonder how I'm going to be able to deliver those lines and, and whether I'm going to be able to be capable enough uh, to satisfy the director and the maker and the audience eventually. Um, that's something that I think all of us uh, have to contend with. Um, I certainly do, and I feel that every day is a uh, is a fresh challenge. But somewhere I think I enjoy that. I want to have a sleepless night. Um, want to live with that, that work that is going to be coming the next morning and be worried about how it's going to come and, uh, uh, and be really concerned about it and be living with it. Uh, from the moment you get up in the morning till the time you dress up and you're traveling, it, it, it's kind of continuously plays in your mind. Uh, I mean, when you look at your past performances and uh, the way you got the roles, the adversities you faced, the difficulties you faced in getting them, how do you think you really overcame them? I guess you just have to persist in, in doing what you're doing. Um, success and failure are, you know, things that will come continuously in your life. Um, and you're never able to make out what is going to succeed and, and what is going to fail. But yes, if you 
there are times when you have continuous failure and you wonder whether um, you know you should be pursuing this any further um, it's something that is more individual at that point of time i think you feel that uh, despite the fact that there have been many failures in your life uh, there is something that you wait for to happen and you hope that if that happens then you would be able to you know strike the gong at the right time and and then suddenly everything happens when it happens and let's say you do have a success then comes the other problem now how to keep it going and keep continuing to be successful because that's what's going to uh, respond to how the other people are going to take you in their future projects and so on and so forth and that's a continuous process and then suddenly you have a failure in between and uh, i've been through many of those moments and uh, i guess what i've done is that i i just wanted to continue doing what i was doing i um, there were many occasions when uh, you feel that you know you should give up and go back home but uh, the fear of facing people uh, looking at you as a defeatist and having lost and come back i think that's one of the factors that keeps you going uh, you don't know how how you would face them um so for me it was that if i was to fail um, as a professional in cinema uh, i would have to go back to kolkata and start <laughs> working all over again and they would look at me with uh, with a lot of uh, uh, well not very pleasant expressions so um i think that fear keeps you going and i i think success is something that you know we all enjoy we love it we want it to be you know everlasting it is not going to be everlasting and i think that um, all of us have been in that line long enough whether it's in sports or your own profession you know that it's not going to be everlasting and some point you have to contend with the fact that there's going to be somebody who's younger who's better looking who's better uh, performing than you who will come and and you know uh, oust you or you know uh, put you away um fortunately in our profession unlike the sporting profession uh, which i have great respect for because i do believe that <clears throat> their lives are uh, and their profession is limited to a certain time period depending upon their physicality there are opportunities for you know uh, roles for senior citizens and <laughs> people who are who are who are aged well, you're not like there me. yet so we don't have to <laughs> go know, there of course i am <laughs> I'm, i'm way beyond senior citizen level um uh, but we do get an opportunity to play the odd you know grandfather the retired army officer things like that so there's always uh, something going on and i just like that process you know many many of my colleagues uh, would uh, would disagree uh, many of my colleagues have very gracefully exited and and felt that you know i don't want to be doing this which is absolutely acceptable but i just like the idea of being there it's it's difficult to contend with what i have to on the sets these days because i'm 71 and the average age on sets these days is about 25 so it's it's a rut it's not very um conducive to you know mingling with the with the crowd so to say well it's But not any really different it's very what it's really great to see the younger generation yes. i want to really say that um i i truly enjoy their company and i love the way that they work and i love the talent that comes up each day in every film um and it's a great experience to be in the energy and the and the confidence that they exude but yes you know i'm 71 and they're 25 so as you seen cinema in india change over the years uh, and of course different languages as well as we look across this great country of ours uh, what strikes you the most the first 10 years when you were working and then of course the next decade right. and so on as it moved on obviously equipment and all of yeah. that changes as we go along institutes have come along as well but at the end of the day what would you say is those major changes that have happened i think um apart from what you've just mentioned the technological um, advancement um the acceptance of cinema as an entity in the uh, the polity of the country i think it's the the audiences that have changed over the years um in the 40s and the 50s uh, children from good homes were, were not allowed to even think of this profession 
uh, even when I was young, my parents had to go and wet a film before we would be allowed to go and see it. Uh, but look, that's changed now. Uh, and um, cinema has almost become a parallel culture of the country. I don't know whether this is good or bad for the country, but the fact is that that's what it is. And I think as we celebrate 100 years of Indian cinema, that's something that I feel very proud of. An entity that was looked down upon, almost considered infra dig, um, is today an acceptable feature in our society. And not just in our society, is it's projecting our profile to other parts of the world. And nothing could be better than that. So that's how I look at it. And I feel that this is something that is only going to get bigger. Um, we are the largest filmmaking nation in the world, but we don't earn that kind of money. I believe United States and Hollywood um, uh, is the second largest export earner for the United States of America. And despite the fact that we are making the largest number of movies in the world, we're nowhere near that. Um, so there's a huge financial difference, there's a huge commercial difference. But I think that there is suddenly an awareness uh, about everything that is concerning Indian cinema in other parts of the world. I don't know if it's just the cinema that's doing it, uh, and I may be completely wrong here, but I do believe that with the opening up of the economy in the country, many things about the country have suddenly started being accepted, whether it's our food, our, our dresses, our culture, our politics, our games, our cinema, um, our music. Um, and whether it is the economic reason that has drawing other people from the more developed countries to our country, I don't know. Uh, it's a question that I posed to uh, uh, Mr. Steven Spielberg when he was here and I was moderating an interview of his. Uh, uh, he didn't seem to think that. He just felt that... Uh, uh, the country by itself, uh, because of communication, is you know everyone's getting closer, and uh, the fact that cinema needs to be admired, whether it comes from any part of the world, uh, could be the reason. But these are the things that I notice now, and I and I feel that the people, the acceptability of cinema as a very powerful entity in our society, and the fact that it's getting international recognition. Uh, are some of the things that have changed from the time when I was there. I mean, talking about the films and how it has transformed over the last 40 years, how would we compare it to the Western world and the way they make their films? You just did a film called The Great Gatsby. Baz Luhrmann, the director, obviously wanted you for that particular role. Uh, Leo Caprio, the star of the film, the movie did well. It was a terrific role. I thought the scene that you did was terrific. And uh, how would you compare those two? Obviously, uh, they are more advanced in the technology, in the way they make their films. Um, but there is a cultural difference. And that cultural difference, I hope, will remain. We're often uh, criticized and, uh, um, about our films being too escapist, too fantasized, and away from reality. And therefore, um, many a times looked at it very cynically by the West. But <clears throat> our culture is different, you know. Um, I think cinema here was looked upon as an entertainment entity uh, for the common man, a common man that uh, struggles throughout the day in the heat and the sun and whatever it is. Uh, leads a, a, a very uh, difficult existence, poor, but with his earnings for the day, he wants to come away and entertain himself. And it would be extremely difficult for him to come into a cinema hall and see a film on his own life. But well, that would be reality. He wants to get away from that. He wants, you know, something pretty and humorous and a lot of songs and dance and laughter. It was made for these people, and it is still is, because we have a very, very large percentage of people who are still deprived of some of the um, facilities that are available, the kind of living that is there in the Western world. <clears throat> so there will always be this difference. And I think that uh, our USP has been this. Every film you have, you have songs and you have dances. Yeah, 
because we enjoy that. The common man enjoys that. And yes, we have a story. And uh, we have many elements in one film. And there are perhaps just one element and you make an entire film in the West on that element and it does extremely well. But uh, we are equally proficient in doing a song and dance routine and having a drama, have a little bit of comedy, because it's, it's a very healthy mix of a combined entertainment. It's much like the way we have our food. Our thali is filled with different kinds of uh, different dishes and, um, and our cultures are so different, you know. You drive a hundred miles out of Mumbai, uh, you, you won't be able to understand the language of the person who's talking to you. Somewhere that, that grows into our system, into the, into the way we react with each other, the way we talk, we speak, we conduct ourselves. So I'm very happy with the way Indian cinema is. So when you look at the entire profession in your gambit of your life, how would you, if you had to pick a sentence or, or, or a couple of sentences to say it, how would you say excellence? How would you define excellence in your profession? Uh, I'll never be able to do that. Because I feel that um, it's something that I shall possibly never be able to achieve um, till the last moment of my work. Uh, I feel that I need to be challenged every day. And I'm not sure whether that has reached some kind of pinnacle. I think satisfaction in my profession is a unacceptable term for me. Uh, um, the moment I'll, I'll say I'm satisfied with what I've done, I will kill myself as an actor. Uh, we don't want to be satisfied. I want something to come up tomorrow, which is going to challenge me and make me do something better than what I did yesterday. Uh, I, I would like to look up to it like that. Uh, the moment we say that we are satisfied and, you know, we've done our best and this is what excellence means, I would be dishonest to my profession and to myself as an actor. So I would really want um, that there be no limits. I don't want to define excellence because in my, in my idea, I can't define it. Because if I've defined it, that means I've actually achieved it. If I've achieved it, then I'm being dishonest because I know that there's something better that can be done. At the stage you're in your life, you're still working nonstop. Yep. You're doing television, you're doing movies, you're doing series, you're running around the world. Uh, is, this, is this by choice, something you really want to do and you're, and you're filling your day and your life with so much stuff? I don't know. It's just that these opportunities keep coming. And I feel that uh, much like a sportsman, if your body is working, and I'd like to, you know, play that forehand and that backhand <laughs> and the smash. Um, um, I think it's more the fact that you remain within the profession. Uh, you see the, and meet the, the next generation and the next generation. And it's a wonderful experience to spend time with them, uh, to watch their kind of work, what they're doing, and to be a part of that uh, group. Uh, and that's really what what interests me. If there are many tributaries that keep coming up, uh, whether it is cinema first and then television next, or whether it's the social media, or whether it is the internet or endorsements, or, um, to me these are all um, different uh, um, opportunities to be able to get into them and do something. Um, Everyone said that I was making the biggest mistake of my life when I started off doing television, that who wants to yes. be, the Indian version of who wants to be a millionaire. But it, it worked fine and, I, and I'm still working at it. You know, it's, I started it in the year 2000. We are on, in the 14th year and it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's the experience of meeting people and, and the contestants and knowing how they go through life. Um, in cinema, you meet the younger generation. You, you enter their minds and their thinking and uh, it's, it's wonderful to be in their company. Uh, I, I work on social media, I write my own blog, I am on Twitter and Facebook and uh, you read comments from people and who interact with you and, and I respond to them and uh, you come to see facets of life, facets of your own self which perhaps you could never have gauged uh, had you not had that opportunity and um, I think it's, it's, just, it's just wonderful to be able to do that. 
can't believe you're on all the social media. <laughs> it's just mind-boggling because I follow you also on Twitter. Oh, yes. And yeah. I get so does my family and so on and so forth. So it's very interesting to see, my goodness, you know, I mean, if he's still doing all yeah. this stuff, he's modernized himself, <laughs> you know, which is brilliant. Now, what would you say to youngsters, one, getting into cinema in India, and two, youngsters in general in this country about perhaps trying to follow their dream? I think there needs to be uh, some kind of a self-confidence in uh, knowing your craft and the direction that you want to take. As I said earlier to you, we never had that opportunity. There, were, there was no one to guide us as to where to go. Had I known that there was a Pune Institute, I would not have wanted to go to university to graduate. I would have rather gone to the Pune Film Institute, knowing that I want to become an actor. But it just happened. and. We just went ahead. But today's generation is a hundred times more smarter, more knowledge, more aware of what they want to do with their lives, where they want to go, and how to get there. And that's really brilliant. At a very young age, they make up their minds that this is the profession that they're going to follow. So if you have the ability to be able to gauge what your talent is, then everything else falls into place. Because there is that self-confidence that I know what I'm doing. I need to have that confidence within me. And yes, there will be obstacles and there will be many hurdles to cross. But if I am convinced within myself, then someday I will achieve that and I will cross those hurdles. I mean, thank you so much for joining us on the show. You're a true inspiration <laughs> to all of us. And uh, once again, I'm happy to have you. And uh, I can wish you safe travels, good health to you and the family. And come see us in the U.S. as well. Sure.